Get rid of the economics. Get rid of the prejudice. We're talking about rational behavior, rational thought. And anyone who would sit through this presentation who is about to undergo colon cancer surgery and say, oh, I'm not gonna take cimetidine, I'm not gonna bother with metformin or aspirin, all three of those drugs, by the way, uh, should be given to most cancer patients. They all have specific anti-cancer properties that can amplify the effects of whatever traditional therapies or conventional therapies you're gonna be using. Man will give his energies to a cause when he regards it as his duty. And you look at the effort that people put out for causes right now. There, there, there was a, a terrible typhoon in the Philippines, and you've got people who feel it's their duty to go over there and help. It's their duty to contribute money to help those people. You've got hundreds of thousands of people around the world who are helping some people who legitimately need some assistance. But we don't feel that sense of duty or obligation when it comes to preserving our own lives and the lives of those who we care for. So Fedorov's fifth doctrine, mankind will act rationally when enough of society acknowledges it is possible and therefore obligatory to redirect the energies now squandered on wars and relentless bickering. Take those energies and put them towards the act of universal salvation. The common goal of humanity is what was espoused by Nikolai Fedorov, and I wholeheartedly endorse it, as do the founders of this church. Our critics contend that we're not gonna be able to control aging, but I think I've documented so far the fact that diseases that we thought could never be contained, never be controlled, they didn't even know what caused them, they've been eradicated. They're gone, they're not, no longer a problem. So as we have to deal with our skeptics, we have to remind them historically, everyone was pessimistic. Everyone thought life would just be a, an average age of 36 or 47. No one imagined that average lifespans would go to the, where they are today. And certainly people today don't understand what's gonna happen. But if you understand the scientific discoveries that have occurred in recent years, it would appear Aging is gonna be reversible before this century ends. But that's not fast enough. We need to accelerate that pace, and we're already on the road to doing that in many respects. So our duty here is to advance the common goal of humanity. This affects everybody. Everyone's aging. Everyone's got some disorder they're having a problem dealing with. And, and we're all facing involuntary death. So this is not just helping a group of people who legitimately need it in a part of the world. This is affecting everyone in the world. I'm gonna conclude this with uh, a little description, just a very brief description of Lee Von Hook. Uh, he had a curiosity about microscopic organisms. He's the one who discovered them. He liked to play with lenses, and he would put lenses together and be able to look at smaller and smaller microorganisms. And he felt an obligation to not only make these observations, but to have drawings made of what he discovered under the microscope and share that information with scientific communities. And these scientific communities at the time, they looked forward to seeing his drawings because no one else in the world was doing it. And what Lee Won Hook wrote in a letter, it had a significant impact on me. And you look at that year, 1716, no one knew anything about microorganisms. No one even conceived that these were what was causing the illnesses of, of the day, the viruses, the bacteria, the parasites. No one even thought that this was a, an issue, but here was a researcher curious, curious enough to identify them, to draw them, to at least let people who were interested know that they existed. That, because before he played around with his lenses and created his microscopes, no one knew these existed. But I wanna read a portion of a letter that he wrote, because this has had a significant impact on me because it relates to people I know. It relates to people I know in this room. It relates to people I've met throughout my entire lifetime. These are different people. These are not the typical person who just goes through life and, and, and feels like they have minimal obligations to society, if any at all. But Leon Hook stated, my work, which I've done for a long time, was not pursued in order to gain the praise I now enjoy, but chiefly from a craving after knowledge, which I notice resides in me more than most other men. And therewithal, whenever I found out anything remarkable, 
I have thought it my duty to put down my discovery on paper so that all ingenious people might be informed thereof. It resulted in doctors hundreds of years later coming to a conclusion that microorganisms were the leading cause of death. And if you killed these microorganisms, if you immunized against these microorganisms, you'd eradicate the leading causes of death of the day. I promised you at the beginning of this presentation, you were going to see something that's never been shown before. We're going to just hold this slide here just to remind you, a 45-year-old woman, who, by the way, is a very healthy woman now because of the therapy she underwent, she had significant hypoperfusion, hypometabolic activity. Those two little holes right there at the top of her brain. This huge area of low metabolic activity. Virtually nothing going on. Bear in mind, her brain structure was there. It's just it wasn't all functioning. These deep caverns, this huge gulf indicating, this was done by a SPECT scan. The SPECT scan measures metabolic activity, not structure. You look at that. Within 60 days of initiating a therapy, using a drug, by the way, that was approved in 1991, this is her brain. Remember those two little holes at the very top? Uh, they're filled in. Remember how deep that cavern was at the very top of her skull? A lot of that activity has been restored. Even more remarkable, we go to the base of her brain. Those two caverns that seem to descend all the way through her brain, they're mostly filled in. And look at how much restoration of metabolic activity occurred. Look at this. Maybe we should go back just to remind people how bad off this woman was. She was crippled with chronic fatigue syndrome. And she had a lot of other biomarkers of accelerated aging, lots of inflammation, uh, lipid levels out of balance, glucose levels out of balance. She was aging at an accelerated rate. And she was, as I said, a disabled individual, which led her to engage in this experimental therapy. Look at that. 60 days, within 60 days, we have this kind of an improvement. Now, everyone in this room, I hate to say it, has some of that hypometabolic activity occurring in their brain. I say, everybody, well, there's some young people that don't. You see, but when we get older, and when we maybe consume too much ethanol, maybe some recreational drugs, uh, eating the wrong kind of foods, eat a lot of saturated fats, it tends to clog the capillaries in your brain. Um, we develop these hypometabolic regions of our brain, and they impair our cognitive function, and they lead to Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and stroke. Well, there's now a, a therapy that we are investigating that may enable us to reverse that process. And this is a breakthrough that no one knows exists except the people in this room right now, uh, and a few others, a few others. And we hope through this church and other organizations to accelerate the development of this technology so we can take aging people who have systemic degenerative problems, because it's not just in the brain, it's systemic improvements that we're seeing in patients who are undergoing this therapy. We can reverse the aging process, do something that no one believes can occur today well, it's already occurred. It's already happened. So to conclude, uh, our creed, uh, at least for this first service, uh, is our mission. The common goal of humanity is to accelerate the development of technologies that will enable mankind to evolve into an environment of perpetual duration, of perpetual life, or at least indefinitely extended life, free of the illnesses, the diseases, the disabilities that aging inflicts on us. I want to again thank everyone for showing up tonight. We could have, I think, packed this room. We intentionally didn't for a number of reasons. Uh, we wanted to see what kind of organic uh, attendance that we could gain. This was not advertised anywhere, was not promoted to the media. This is our first service. We plan to have our next service December 24th. Uh, that's going to be an annual event uh, where we try to remember people who have not made it, who have not reached the stage that we have. Uh, we're going we're to run some of their names, uh, review some of their biographies, and, and talk about ways that we may be able to revive these individuals. So that's going to be our December 24th service. Uh, some of you may have something else to do December 24th, and that's fine. This is a non-denominal um, organization. Uh, we're going to have holidays throughout the year at unusual times and usual times. 
Uh, but it's going to be a, a time for us to gather together. And uh, downstairs, we've got some refreshments. And after the service, uh, I'm going to be here. I look forward to talking to everyone about any topic they'd like. Anything that's non-commercial, that, by the way. Nothing commercial. This church, our mission is to accelerate the common goal of humanity. And commercial activities can occur outside the church. I want to thank you all. Thank you.